Hello, guys. Uh, myself is Vandana. Uh, I've been working with Linux kernel and device drivers like almost like 20 years. I had worked on device driver development for embedded systems when I was part of uh, NVIDIA subsystem and uh, a, a various kernel subsystems for security, memory management as such. And uh, I also uh, involved in like taking the Linux tr trainings for device drivers and Linux kernel internals as in when I get time as such. And today I'm going to talk about um, the subsystems that is part of the kernel that is used to provide the interface to the user space for writing the driver development at the user space. And there, these are the framework that is available in the kernel, that is the UIO framework and BFIO framework. So the ag agenda is to understand and know what is this UIO framework, how does it works, and how does the user space applications can make use of this, as well as uh, once the UIO is done, then we'll go and look it into the VFIO uh, interface, which is the virtual function IO interface, which is particularly been useful in case of virtualized environment, okay? And then look at the usage uh, when we are using the VFIO driver interface. So to begin with, uh, uh, let's start with the UIO driver interface. So it is basically a user space IO interface and uh, using this interface, it helps us to write the majority of the part of the driver uh, functionality in the user space. So basically, like when we say that we want to, then the applications want to interact with the hardware. So the corresponding functionality has to be supported into the, uh, in, is as part of a driver in the kernel space as such. But there, there are need, uh, need in such a way, uh, with it has its own benefits as well as some um, uh, disadvantages, having the all the processing in the kernel address space. So uh, the the alternative solution is to implement the user space drivers and UIO uh, driver framework is one of that interface. So it helps to write the most of the part of the driver functionality, the user space. And, uh, uh, and a very core or very small part ha has to be implemented into the kernel, drive, kernel, uh, kernel space as such. And this UIO interface, uh, it makes use of the driver uh, character device driver interface and sysfs interface to uh, interact with the user space applications. And it has been available since a long time, since 2.6.23 kernel as such. And the basic functionality it provides is the uh, device access, uh, interrupt handling, and memory allocation. So uh, as we see that uh, the UIO allows to implement the driver functionality in the driver, but there is still some part that has to be implemented in the kernel space. And basically, which is to set up that device and register the interrupt handler, so that this interrupt handler processing would uh, allow to pass the interrupts to the uh, user space applications. So the device, uh, as we said, that the UI of driver framework provides the character device interface, and it provides uh, uh, in the form of uh, this uh, device file entries called slash uh, dev slash UIO zero, like for the number of devices that has been that uh, that would be programmed through UIO interface, that will start with first device as UIO zero, then UIO one, and so on, as the subsequent number of the devices. And this is the device entry that has been used to access the address space of the device. Means what the communication with the device will go through this device entry as such. And like as each device might have one or more memory regions, uh, uh, memory regions providing the path for configuration as well as for data data transfer. So all this memory, uh, the memory regions can be mapped to the user user space through the uh, MAP interface, and the application can access the memory regions once that memory has been mapped. And uh, means uh, again, this uh, all uh, the memory mapping and the information that has been provided to the user space through the sysfs entry. 
So uh, most of the, um, the, the all the information device inf uh, the, from the application that would be presented uh, through this uh, slash say slash class UIO uh, directories. Like, like if there is a single instance, then you will have the directory UIO zero. And if there are multiple device instances, then each, each will have UI 0, 1, 2, and corresponding attribute entries into that uh, SysFS directory structure. Okay. So that's what we see that uh, uh, can provide a read write through the SysFS, and this is the uh, directory path in the SysFS file system. Okay. So uh, no, so like when we talk of a driver development of the basic uh, functionality the driver uh, driver uh, in the kernel space that provides is the access to the device that is the device memory it might be a register memory or it might be a, a data memory and it means uh, and ad along with that there are another interface that uh, we need uh, as a kernel driver need to take care is the uh, responses or notification from the device uh, which comes in form of the interrupts. So that particular interrupt handling um, uh, in the UIO driver that would be take that interrupt handler has to be uh, registered with the kernel part of the UIO driver. And from the user space uh, uh, point of view, the application would make you might would make use of a blocking I blocking read system call. Uh, uh, the, uh, onto the device entry uh, to collect the information of the interrupt, and it can it might also go for a select uh, uh, system uh, system call to wait for an interrupt. And also, like uh, for devices that do not generate interrupts uh, and might make uh, uh, use of this polling mechanism. And that that can be uh, that functionality can be implemented by possibly by setting up the timer uh, a timer handler and then triggering the uh, uh, interrupt uh, in, uh, triggering the interrupts uh, through a configurable time interval intervals as such. And so this is just the API that is used inside the kernel part of the code for sending the interrupts to the user space applications. So, uh, so the, the, these these are the two interfaces that we have as part of the uh, as the user space application can access the UIO interface. That is, one is the device access that goes to the slash dev UIO uh, device file entries, and uh, this uh, applications can application can make use of read uh, read system call to get uh, information of the interrupts and. Um, for uh, intra for uh, for data transfer, the memory regions uh, would be mapped by making use of the MAP system call, and then uh, the basic data transfer can happen through the read write system calls as such. Okay. And all this information, as we said, that it would be available through the SysFS attributes, a corresponding what are the number of corresponding devices that are working under the UI interface. So this, uh, the, the standard uh, interface that is provided uh, information is the name of the device, versioning, and the event, which um, tells the number of events that have been handled by the driver events, uh, as in the number of the interrupt as such. And when the uh, memory mapping has been done, for every memory mapping uh, of the memory region, the corresponding maps dot map slash map x uh, uh, directory would be created in the sysfs entry which would contain the information of the memory regions that are being mapped that is what is the address that has been mapped and how what is the size of that memory region as such and these are these are uh, these are the things that uh, that has to be that is taken care in the kernel part of the ui driver that is uh, basically it makes use of um, the data structure that is ui in 4 and afimm that uh, uh, that stores all the information corresponding to that device like um, the number of uh, the number of memory regions it has and all that information, and these are the standard APIs that are used to register the UI device with the kernel. And when the UI device goes like unregister it, right? and as we have seen that even notifies the API that is used to notify the interrupts to the user space application, which might be waiting on a read or a select uh, system call as such. 
any any questions so far so good so this is to summarize that this is the uh, uh, user space uh, uh, interface that helps you to write the drivers in the user space uh, uh, and the, one of the benefit of the user space drivers is that it provides uh, the higher performance uh, and reduces the latency whereby the data transfer is directly happening to the memory that is mapped into the user address space okay uh, some of the limitation of that is um, it, it has uh, reduced support for the interrupt handling. Uh, in case like uh, MSI interrupts, PCI MSI interrupts, those are not particularly well handled in the UIO interface. And also, like it needs a uh, root privilege to access this uh, dev, uh, slash dev slash UIO uh, uh, as such. So uh, now, um, uh, when we talk about the virtualization or virtualized environment, where there is like a lot of uh, applications that might uh, application like uh, the virtual machine itself uh, want to access the device directly as such. So in that case, uh, one way is that it can use UIO, but it has its own limitations. So um, there's, there's another framework that is part of the Linux kernel called as a VFIO, that is a virtual function IO, uh, which has been used. Uh, basically, it also provides, uh, means the reason for that is that uh, it is used for higher performance there. The VMs can directly go and access the device, uh, uh, device uh, uh, as such and it provides the support for MSI interrupts as well as it doesn't need the user uh, root privilege as such. So the particular device can be assigned to that virtual machine and the virtual machine can directly access the device through this VFI interface. So uh, with this VFI uh, basically provides the device agnostic framework for accessing, exposing the devices directly to the user space uh, in a secure and uh, IMMU protected environment. I will see this, how IMMU can be used along with this framework as such. Okay. So what does this VFI driver framework provides is that it provides the full device access, uh, DMA uh, data transfer support as well as interrupt handling support. And when you say DMA, uh, it's like the read, write, uh, read, write, and MMAP uh, through the M uh, memory mapping support of the device resources. And event handling uh, goes, through, uh, goes through the event FD mechanism as such. And it also provides the support for IMMU APIs as such, and the bus device means it, uh, the devices can be PCI device or platform device support has been handled. And basically this framework, we have a framework which is very much commonly been used in DPDK as well as N NVMe um, stack which provides the uh, storage stack and the networking stack in the user space. Uh, so this is, this is the diagram that I've just taken from the Alex Williams uh, presentation is done sometime back in 2011 or 12, I think. So this to under, uh, help you understand, in the virtualized environment, the user space um, application that is a KMO, how does it makes use of this VFI interface to access the devices? So basically, VFI decomposes the physical device as set of user space APIs. And then again, at the other end, it recomposes that physical device to the virtual device in KMO. So to uh, understand uh, the, this whole VFIO concept, uh, uh, VFIO framework, basically it um, it consists of uh, means there are three concepts that in the VFIO that is the that is the devices or the groups and the containers. So basically, a device is that uh, that uh, that represent the particular device uh, device. Uh, uh, a particular device uh, entity as, to, uh, as, as such that it creates a programming interface uh, that, is, uh, um, uh, that is made up of uh, um, different interfaces to provide the IO access, uh, provide the interrupt support and the DMA support. And uh, the user space uh, can utilize this interface to get the device information as well as configure the device as such. 
uh, so uh, at times that uh, the systems uh, uh, cannot be identified individually as such so in that case or it can be that uh, a number of devices can be grouped together uh, uh, as a one isolatable engine, uh, one isolatable uh, group as such. In that case, uh, the groups uh, comes into the picture where uh, it combines the set of devices which are isolat isolatable from other devices in the system. I mean, the set of devices that are to be configured in a particular VM as such, those can be grouped together using the uh, groups group concept. Basically, this support is provided through the um, driver, in, through the kernel subsystem uh, in the form of uh, IUCTL functions to program, uh, program the devices in a particular group as such. And when a uh, number of groups has to be combined together, it can be done that all the set of groups can be con can be combined to form a container as such. So this is basically been used to provide isolation uh, from the uh, isolation of the devices from the other uh, separate environment. So this is just to give you an overall idea how the user space, uh, the, the KMU can communicate with the VFIO framework when you're, when it is talking to a uh, different device interface, the device might be a PCI device or it might be an IMMU unit altogether. And then these are the set of the APIs that it might be a container API, group API, and device API. And so those comes in form of IOCTL commands into the VFI framework, and then it diverts particular to the device as such. Okay, so um, to look at how this VFI works, what we are we try to look at is what are the basic basic functionality that uh, that is needed when we talk to the device. The application talks to the device. That's like how does the driver programs the device? Then how does the device responds back or signal back the notification to the driver, and the actual data transfer happens. Again, the interface that has been used uh, 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 by the VFI framework is again the driver, uh, driver uh, device file interface. As such, that is a VFIO, dev VFIO, VFIO. And uh, this interface is used to basically ma manage the whole, of, uh, to perform the operation on this VFIO framework. So uh, uh, the first thing is that how to, how to program the device. Now let's take an example of PCI device and see how this the driver programs this PCI device. So as we are aware that each PCI device is accessible through the PCI, its own uh, PCI configuration space. And through the PCI configuration space, the driver gets to know that what are the different memory regions it, it is uh, providing and the other intro, uh, information as such. So basically, like uh, this is just to give a little more details about uh, the PCI config space uh, as such. That is, this, this is output from a LS, uh, LSPCI mm -hmm. command, uh, taking particular an example of VJ controller as such. So if you look at the information, uh, it is providing the information, particularly the memory regions as such. Like here we see that there are uh, four memory regions that are part of that device. Like region zero is the IO port region uh, uh, of uh, that is starting at address D010 and 60 bytes, whereas there are other two memory regions starting memory one, region one and region two, that are, those are the memory um, uh, uh, MMIO regions as such. And it also providing the uh, expansion ROM uh, region as such. So these are the regions that uh, uh, the, uh, the uh, device, PCI device provide through which uh, the communication with the device happens. So basically when we think of a PCI driver in the kernel, so in the kernel driver, these regions, they are IO mapped or mapped into the virtual address space. So when we are using VFIO, these regions are extracted through the VFIO interface and then they are mapped into the uh, uh, user space memory as such. And uh, this information is again provided to the user space, like each of these regions, uh, like as we say that each device will be exposed as a device device file slash dev device file, 
and the different regions, they will be mapped into the different file offsets of that device as such. Okay. So uh, to uh, uh, understand better, we will take an example of PCI, VFIO, PCI driver as such. So this driver, which uh, resides in the driver VFI, VFIO, PCI directory in the kernel sources, and uh, basically it, the whole of the functionality are been provided by populating this uh, VFIO, PCI operation data structure, uh, which helps us to implement uh, the number of functionalities uh, 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 for that device file as such. Uh, so that uh, that uh, that helps us to give the that provides the device information, uh, and this information can be extracted from the user space through uh, means, uh, through the IOCTL interface as such. I means and the information can be get the overall information of the device like how many memory regions it has, what is its interrupt number, and all that information. Uh, so yeah, that's what uh, we talk like. The application would uh, interact with the device to uh, for getting the information and for configuring some of the settings. There are the a number of ISVTL commands that are being uh, implemented into this framework. And here I, I would go through some of them, the basic ones as such, to get an understanding how this uh, interface works as such. Okay. So the device properties, they are being discovered through the IOC tools by the user space applications. So to get the device information, we have this uh, IOC tool command, get device info. Then to get the information of the various region, uh, regions, that is memory regions and uh, uh, option ROM, if it is pro uh, option ROM is provided, and all that information that can be extracted through this, get uh, region info. And the information about the interrupts, we have the IRQ interrupt as such, or uh, how many number of interrupts are supported, and the properties of the interrupts as such. And just to get in a bit of detail of each of that, uh, IOC, it, uh, like when uh, the uh, application wants to know the information of the device, it would trigger this get device info uh, IOC. It, uh, and uh, this information is passed through this uh, data structure called as VFIO device info. So here we see that um, mm -hmm. uh, first we'll see the basic things that is the number of the regions that are uh, support that are that is part of that particular device. Then the number of IRQ supported as such, and along with that it has these uh, flags. Uh, variable that provides the details of the information as whether it's a platform device or PCI device as such, and the capabilities. Similarly, to get the, now once the application gets to know that how many number of regions are there available, then the information of each of this region can be extracted by, uh, by the, this another IOCTL command to get the re, uh, information that is get region info and in this get region in for um, the parameters that as part is the region index, then the size of that region and the offset as such. So now here the region, what when we are here we're talking about the PCI device as such. So in this case, the information that can be uh, available to the application is it can, can be a PCI config region or it can be an option ROM, ROM region, and uh, it can be any, any one of the uh, bar, bar regions, like the PCI supports the six bar regions that is that has been indexed by bar zero to bar five as such. So the application uh, will be able to get the uh, information that what is the size and what, what is uh, the offset of that provided the index region. And this get, uh, get IRQ info would provide the uh, uh, information about the interrupt as such, which would be used by the application uh, to further uh, pull, pull the in, uh, pull for the interrupt as such. Okay, that is, it gives the 
the number of interrupts and the different uh, flags tells the properties of the interrupt whether it is maskable or unmaskable or auto mask is like automatically, uh, automatically masked by the VAR fire driver. So based on this requirement, uh, it can check the conditions as such. So these are the simple uh, st uh, straightforward uh, IOCTL commands through which the application would uh, get the information about the device. So now let's say like how the interrupts are being handled in the user space. So uh, the, uh, the interrupts, uh, uh, the user space make use of this uh, event FD mechanism uh, to notify uh, event FD mechanism that is uh, to the user space application for the events. And uh, basically, it returns the uh, the FD return can be used to uh, what you say uh, the application can do read or pull or select to uh, uh, collect the events that are the interrupts that have been generated. Means the, from the device, it goes to the VFI framework, and the framework um, through the event mechanism it passes the interrupts to the user space. So we have seen like how the device can be programmed um, and how the information about the device can be access, ex, uh, extracted or get available to the user space directly without going into, into the kernel space as such. Then the, one other major part of the device programming or device handling is the data transfer uh, as such. And as a standard mechanism, there is always a data a DMA uh, uh, access that is there that provides uh, uh, the make, uh, interface to do the read and write onto the device memory, system memory, or might be a peer device memory. And also it provides this support through IOMMU, that is uh, memory management unit for IO. So basically the, uh, the IOMMU, the, uh, the basic functionality of IOMMU was to do the translation of IO address space and uh, along with that, it also provides the isolation, uh, device uh, access isolation as such. So uh, like uh, why we are talking about that is like if the DMA uh, imposes a risk to the overall system integrity, like uh, it can uh, allow uh, device uh, read write access to happen to the system memory as such. So to uh, mitigate that, I mean, this risk can be mitigated with the help of the uh, IOMMU. That is, uh, that it provide by providing the isolation. Devices can be isolated from each other and from the uh, arbitrary memory access as such. Which this, this support is not present in the UIO interface that we saw it previously. And this device isolation uh, is helpful in case of virtualized environment. In the particular VM, the particular set of devices and its corresponding memory addresses will be isolated from the uh, other set of devices and the memory regions as such. Uh, so one of the issues, some of the issue of the IOMMU is that uh, it always does not identify the uh, I mean, not always at the granularity of a single device as such. So in that case, uh, um, in that case, this uh, this problem can be solved by making use of IOMMU groups. So that's why where the set of devices can be grouped to uh, can be put together in a group, which is identified by the IOMMU, and that group becomes uh, isolated entity. Uh, altogether as such. So VFI is built on the ability to isolate the device using the IMMU, uh, which makes the DMA access uh, secure as such. Okay. So uh, how does a device comes under the control of the VFI interface? So uh, like, uh, let's say that we want to uh, make a particular device access, uh, given uh, access to happen through the VFI interface. So you have just taken an example. 
like a PCI device, um, uh, this particular device is available through LSPCI. So uh, when the system boots up, the PCI subsystem scans the PCI devices and uh, based on this configuration, it loads the PCI drivers for all that particular, all those devices that are present. So when we want to put that particular device in the VFIO control, what we have to do is we have to unbind that device from the host driver as such um, by uh, going through the CSFS entries as such, first unbind the device and then have to bind the same device to the VFIO driver. So here we are talking PCI device. So this uh, device will be binded to the VFI or PCI driver. And once it is binded done through those interface, it can be accessible. And like uh, the device is uh, the, uh, going through the IOMU, then if it has multiple devices, then they, can, they have to be bound. Each of the device has to be bounded separately to the uh, v, uh, VFR driver as such. Yeah. So this is just an example showing that in a group that is a single device, there is another group that has two devices together. This 42 and 23, it is the number, group number as such. So uh, as we have said that IOMMU group is the preferred granularity to ensure a secure access for the n number of devices in that particular group. But again, then there are some in IMMUs uh, which make use of page tables and which uh, might want to share these pages between different groups as such. Uh, that In that case, like, uh, uh, in that case, those that can be achieved by putting those number of groups onto uh, another, uh, grouping them, all those groups together to form a container. That is, BFI makes use of container class to hold one or more groups as such. And basically, why would we need to do that? As like, uh, if the page tables are being shared, that would help to reduce the overall overhead of the system by reducing TLB trashing and duplicate page tables means over ultimately uh, impacting the IO performance as such. So that, uh, for the, for that can be achieved by creating the containers. So the VFI framework provides the set of API, set of uh, IO serial calls to, uh, to do the programming of this, like how uh, the groups can become uh, uh, how the groups can become uh, combined together to create a container as such, and uh, this is one of the API, uh, one of the uh, IOCTL command that is used to create the container and add the groups into the container. Okay, so this is uh, uh, to give a brief overview of the number of IOCTLs that are present that works on the group and the container as such, and also uh, setting the IOMMU information and uh, as well as um, working with the mapping and unmapping of the DMA regions or memory regions altogether. So at the, at the group to container, we have the set container, getting the information of the container working with IOMMU uh, types as such, and mapping and unmapping by making use of this DMA map and I, uh, unmap uh, IOCTLs. So basically, I right now don't have much access to the uh, my hardware interface uh, uh, setup as such. That's why I've not been able to show you the demo as such. So. This I would just brief up the how the VFIO uh, usage can be done. So basically, when we are using taking some PCI device again, is like first unbind the device from the host driver, then load the VFIO driver, uh, that is a VFIO PCI driver, and once that is uh, available, then bind the device to that v VFIO uh, PCI driver interface are those things that goes through the 
uh, sysfs uh, device entries as such okay so that's uh, comes to the end of this uh, uh, brief introduction of uio driver framework and v vfio driver framework as such any questions you have some virtual questions, if you don't mind me reading them off. Yeah. Okay. What particular end, use, end user use cases slash workloads have benefits from the VFIO and UIO framework? Any performance improvement comparing with traditional techniques? So yeah, so oh, VFIO or UIO, it provides a direct access from the user space itself. So one of the thing is that it uh, eliminates the need of popping the data from kernel space to add uh, user space as to it. Whereas the, whenever the DMA is done, DMA is done directly to the user buffers altogether. So that enhances the IO performances as well as reduces the latency of handling uh, of data, uh, data transfer as such. Okay, and I think there's a follow-up. What are the known drawbacks of the framework? Uh, one of the, uh, uh, like when you talk of the UIO, the drawback is that it, it has uh, some limitation on the interrupt handling. And the uh, other thing is that it needs a root privilege as such. So there's those other things. And those to uh, eliminate the, those uh, limitations, the VFIO interface has been added, which provides the one of the um, one of the uh, what do you say uh, problem with this security uh, secure access is there. So uh, when the VFIO is used, goes through the, with the IOMMU, then that security access uh, aspect has been handled by isolating the devices and its regions altogether. Okay, I have one more on here as well. To the end user use cases, one such example is DPDK and related projects, SPDK, IPDK, right. et cetera. Yes. In these projects, user space access to the underlying device is necessary to reach performance numbers in order of magnitude faster than going through the kernel. DPDK is fo focused on user space access to the NICs for faster packet processing. Do you have anything to comment on that? Uh, so, yeah, basically DPDK uh, uh, uses the VFIO interface altogether to get the, uh, uh, to memory map those memory regions into the user space. And once that memory has been available, uh, 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 interrupt settings has been available, then the DPDK stack basically programs, uh, uh, programs the data, data, data flow uh, through the memory map that is done by the VFIO. We have two more on here. Do you feel up for answering them? Yeah. Okay. How are IOMMU groups typically assigned? Is this purely platform dependent, or can it, can the user make changes to which devices are in which groups? So yes, the user can make uh, user through this IOCTL system call can uh, create the groups and then assign the devices into that group. Okay. And the last one: Is there any relationship between VFIO and Virtuo? Sorry, can you repeat? Is there any relationship between VFIO and VIRTIO? Uh, yeah, so what, what IO is like, uh, this, this is the interface that uh, uh, provides the virtual, uh, means uh, uh, the word IO is used in, again in the virtual environment where it will provide the virtual device interfaces. Uh, as such, and then virtual devices itself, and these virtual devices will be binded uh, and av made available through the VFIO. Okay. So VF what IO is a physical entity to represent the virtual devices in the, uh, in the virtualized environment, and then VFIO will be top on top of that, uh, exposing that virtual devices to the applications. Okay, wonderful, that's it from virtually. Okay, any more questions from you guys? Okay, thank you guys.